We have had a lot of business, unfortunately, at NCSC in the last few years because virtually every state in which science education standards has come up for consideration has had a big fight about the coverage of evolution in them. NCSE was started by a group of scientists and teachers who were very concerned because in the late 70s and early 80s there were a lot of attempts to pass equal time for creation science and evolution laws and clearly this is something that neither scientists nor teachers liked. It wasn't exactly help help the creationists are coming but it's you know kind of along those lines. Most scientists uh, just throw up their hands and say creationists they drive me crazy you know you handle it. We've worked a lot with science education organizations. The most important group we work with is members of the faith community because the best kept secret in this controversy is that Catholics and mainstream Protestants are okay on evolution. Are you sure about that, Eugenie? I think she might mean mainstream Protestant scientists. Granted, according to that old Gallup poll, upwards of 60% of Americans are young earth creationists. In any case, approximately 40% of scientists are Christian and 99% of scientists agree with evolution. Thus, 39 to 40% of scientists are Christian and believe in evolution. In any case, yes, yeah, she's right about the Catholics. The Pope has declared that evolution is okay with God, so she's right about the Catholics. Liberal Christians have been fighting with conservative Christians for so long that they'll side with anybody against the fundamentalists. Yeah, right, sure, like uh, Ken Miller, a Catholic, who uh, tore Intelligent Design a brand new anal orifice, not because the scientific evidence pointed that way, no, far from it. He did it just for the funsies, to squish them fundies. Really, can someone be this ignorant yet speak in a language? Implicit in most evolutionary theory is that either there's no God or God can't have anything, any role in it. So naturally, as, as many evolutionists will say, it's, it's the strongest engine for atheism. Yet this does not preclude the faith in God of some scientists. Ken Miller, Google. They called me as a witness and a, and a lawyer said, uh, Dr. Dawkins, uh, has your belief in evolution, has your study of evolution turned you towards atheism? I would have to say yes. And that's the worst possible thing I could say for winning that, that court case. So people like me are bad news for the science lobby, the evolution lobby. Professor Dawkins didn't want to say that his scientific inclinations led him to doubt the existence of God on the basis of lack of evidence because in a predominantly Christian society with a predominantly Christian judicial system, there may be a little conflict of interest if they hear that this theory may be harmful to that old-time religion. Fortunately, we've gotten rather far since the Scopes trial, and the Dover trial ruled against intelligent design. Working hard to keep ideas in check are our friends in the media. Morning, paper. I interviewed dozens and dozens of scientists, and uh, when they're amongst each other or talking to a journalist who they trust, uh, they'll speak about, um, you know, it's, it's incredibly complex or molecular biology is in a crisis, but publicly they can't say that. I interviewed dozens and dozens of scientists, and uh, when they're amongst each other or talking to a journalist who they trust, or talking to a journalist who they trust. Gee, I guess you're right. He can't always trust the media. Eugenie Scott, my understanding is that there is not a single peer-reviewed article out there that supports intelligent design. Am I wrong? You are not wrong. You are correct. That is not a misrepresentation on the media's behalf. There really isn't a legitimate peer-reviewed article supporting intelligent design. Meyer's paper doesn't count. It wasn't peer-reviewed. Saying it was peer-reviewed and then failing to list the scientists who reviewed it is not peer review. It's academic dishonesty. We constantly deal with reporters who refuse even to report the correct definition of intelligent design. They, over and over again, talk about uh, <clears throat> life is so complex, God must have done it. Explain, just what, admit it. It's religion. religion. Very Why? Simple. You just can't. It's religion. It's a wanton distortion of our I know I've said this before, but let's go over it again anyway. Intelligent design necessitates a designer. This means one of two things. A. Aliens did it. 
Me. God did it. If anyone can find another option for intelligent design, please enlighten me. Aliens would themselves have to either evolve or be created. If aliens evolved, there really is no point to involving them, unless evidence points that way, because we'd acknowledge that evolution is possible. Or, of course, the aliens were created, which begs the question, who created them? Sooner or later, you get to a race of aliens that either evolved or was created by a deity. If intelligent design holds Ben Stein's view that panspermia is rather unlikely, their argument points towards the deity, not about religion, my ass. But what happens if a reporter decides to take a more balanced approach to intelligent design? There might be a remarkable pressure on that reporter not to side against the evolutionists. I thought I told you to kill that story. Few reporters have learned this better than author and journalist Pamela Winnick. When she refused to take sides in an article she wrote about intelligent design, the Darwinists found a new favorite target. Number one, I wasn't Christian, I was Jewish. Number two, I wasn't religious. Number three, I was not taking a position uh, in favor of creationism. I was writing about intelligent design, and it didn't matter. After I wrote that one piece, everything I wrote on the subject was scrutinized. There were hate letters coming into the newspaper. If you give any credence to it whatsoever, which means just writing about it, you are just finished as a journalist. Hmm. Pamela Winnick do be dishonest. Turns out she continued writing for a couple of years at the Pittsburgh Gazette, even after she made her ID advocate views quite plain. What's more, she writes guest articles for the Wall Street Journal. Them blacklistings sure take a toll, don't they? When all other checkpoints fail, there is always the courts. We have spent an enormous amount of time trying to prove to the court what everybody already knows that intelligent design is a particular religious belief. But I thought scientific questions were settled by the evidence, not by taking people to court and suing them. It's already been destroyed in academics. The problem is the Dover School Board disregarded this and brought intelligent design into the classroom anyway. They attempted to go over the heads of the academic community to erode at the foundation of knowledge, the children. Some people decided that they didn't want their kids taught this crap as science, thus the suit against the school board. What about the general idea that intelligent design is doomed as a result of several recent legal setbacks? Uh, I, I think court, court cases don't decide anything. I mean, if you look at the Scopes trial, who won that trial? A very good question. It was ruled that he was indeed guilty of teaching evolution. Considerable doubt was raised in court as to whether the, such a law had any justification whatsoever. Justified or no, the law was broken. He was fined a hundred dollars, a slap on the wrist. Essentially, although he lost that one case, science won the battle. I wasn't the evolutionist. I mean, it was the, the, the Tennessee law was upheld, barring evolution. And yet, in the popular imagination, Scopes is the hero, Inherit the Wind, that movie, uh, which is really bogus history based on the Scopes trial, has, uh, has carried the day. Inherit the Wind was not perfectly accurate. This is true. Parallels exist, though. Matthew Harrison Brady, who died in the end, was not real, but rather was a metaphor for the old-time religion. Rather than launch into a detailed analysis of the story, I'll just say that the general facts of the play were close enough to the real history to give someone an idea of how things went down. 